given. Let us discuss this example. In this example, we have this function which is defined on closed interval 0, 1 and we have to check whether this function is Riemann integrable or not. So we have very simple concept. If upper integral is equal to lower integral, we say the function is Riemann integrable and if both of them are unequal, we say the function is not Riemann integrable. So let us find upper integral and lower integral. But before that, we will try to draw the graph of this function. So this function is defined in this way. It's def it has two different definitions, 1 plus x and 0. So they say close interval 0, 1 intersection q. q means set of rational numbers. That means for set of rational numbers, okay, in this interval 0 to 1, it has definition 1 plus x. And for close interval 0, 1 minus q, that means other than rational, that means you can say for irrational numbers, its value is 0. Okay, so let us consider 1 plus x, we will draw its graph, after that we will draw the graph of 0. We have, let me write, we have, what we have, we replace f of x by y, so we will have y is equal to 1 plus x. Power of x is 1, power of y is also 1, so that means it represents a straight line, let me write a line here. So we have to draw that line, okay, so for that we need to have any two points on a line. So to find any two points on a line, we draw a table like this, okay. So we have this table having three columns and three rows, x, y and x, y. So uh, we are finding any two points on the line. So what will I do? I will purposely put starting point and ending point of interval, okay. So if I put x is equal to 0, y will be 1. So the point is 0, 1. If I put x is equal to 1, this one, if I put here, value of y will be 2. So the point is 1, 2. So given line passes through these two points. So 0, 1 is here, right? This is 0, 1 and 1, 2. 1, 2 will be here. So 1, 2. So I'm going to draw line for this interval only 0 to 1. So we will have line like this. Okay. Okay. So this is our line. So maybe you will think why I have drawn dotted line here because this function f of x is equal to 1 plus x only for rational numbers. Okay. And for irrational number, its value is 0. So density theorem says there is rational number between any two rationals and there is irrational number between any two rationals. So therefore, okay, for only rationals, we will have this line and for irrational, its value is 0. That means its graph will be like this. Okay. So we will have dotted line here, graph 0. Okay, so we have this graph. Okay, let us go further. After that, we consider any partition. So what will I do? I will divide this interval 0, 1 in n equal parts. Okay, what I am doing? I am dividing the interval in n equal parts. Then length of each sub interval will be 1 by n. Okay, let me write here. Let p is equal to 0, 1 by n, 2 by n, 3 by n and the ith term will be i by n and so on. Last will be n by n. n n will get cancelled and we will have 1. That means starting point is 0, ending point is 1. B partition, B partition of close interval 0, 1. That means we have divided this interval, okay, 0, 1 in n equal parts. Let me show it here. So suppose this is first sub interval, okay, this one, this will be 1 by n. Next one will be 2 by n, next one will be 3 by n and so on, okay, and so on. So, so uh, many sub intervals will be there. So, definitely we can write one thing here, okay, let me write here, delta xn, delta xn that means length of each sub interval, that is definitely 1 by n, okay. So, here in this example, we have to find upper integral, we have to find lower integral. First of all, we will try to find upper integral. So, for that, we need to find capital MI. Do you know the definition of capital MI? So definition of capital MI is supremum of f of x where i minus 1 by n less than or equal to x less than or equal to i by n. Okay. So normally in a definition we write x i minus 1 less than or equal to x less than or equal to x i. But as you can see here, okay, the first interval is 0 comma 1 by n. Second will be 1 by n comma 2 by n. Next one will be 2 by n comma 3 by n. So the ith interval will be i minus 1 by n and i by n. So that's why I have written in this way. Okay. I will show it here. Suppose this is a uh, ith interval. We have 
ओके सो दिस इज i माइनस वन बाय एन एंड दिस इज i बाय एन सो दिस इज जनरल इंटरवल आई हैव कंसिडर्ड हियर सो वी हैव टू फाइंड द मैक्सिमम वैल्यू ऑफ अ फंक्शन बट यू कैन सी हियर द फंक्शन इज इंक्रीजिंग गेटिंग दिस फंक्शन इज इंक्रीजिंग एक्चुअली द फंक्शन हैज टू वैल्यूज आइदर जीरो और it will follow this graph getting so zero will give the minimum value but we are interested in supremum maximum value so i should consider this function so if you consider any ith interval at right end okay at right end of interval the function will attain its maximum value you are getting for example if you consider the first interval 0 comma 1 by n, where the function has a maximum value at 1 by n, getting in second interval 1 by n comma 2 by n where the function has a maximum value at 2 by n that means in the general interval also at right end of that interval okay at right end of interval function will get its maximum value so right end means i by n so let me mention here this is f of i by n so we got mi so let us follow the definition now yeah let us put it here so this is equal to 1 plus i by n okay 1 plus i by n so this is a required value of capital m i and this is true for all i running from 1 to n let me mention here for all i running from 1 to n so in this way we got capital m i now we are going to find upper sum okay but there is no more space to write make a screenshot of it then we will go further so let us find upper sum that means upf okay so the definition of upf is very simple summation i running from 1 to n okay uh, capital m i delta x i so let us put the values which we have i running from 1 to n capital m i we have already calculated that is nothing but uh, 1 plus i by n right and delta x i is 1 by n so let us multiply so we'll have summation i running from 1 to n 1 by n plus i by n square addition is there we can take separate separate summation as well as if there are constant or if there are any terms which are independent on i we can take them outside so see if you take separate separate summation one by n independent on this summation so it, it will come outside i running from 1 to n one only since one by uh, uh, n i have taken outside see here one upon n square we can take outside so summation i running from 1 1 to n and we will have i let us expand the summation one by n we are expanding the summation that means we will put i is equal to 1 2 3 and so on but see there is no any i so what will happen this 1 plus 1 plus 1 this thing will happen and it will be counted n number of times okay and here what will happen 1 by n square if i put i is equal to 1 if i put i is equal to 2 i is equal to 3 and the last value of i is n so we'll have this type of bracket okay so if you add 1 1 1 1 1 n time so you will have n okay plus 1 by n square so we are adding first n natural number so we know its formula that is n into n plus 1 divided by 2 if you add first n natural numbers you can find their sum using this formula so see n n will get cancel 1 here 1 n will get cancel n plus 1 by 2 n see again we can divide separately Uh, let me do it here huh just a minute so this is equal to 1 plus we can divide separately so n upon 2 n that means 1 by 2 right plus and here uh, see what will we have 1 by 2 n right so that means if you add this to 3 by 2 plus 1 by 2 n so this is value of uh, upf upper sum right now we have got upper sum now we are going to find upper integral okay let me find so now upper integral uf this is very important thing uf its definition is infimum of upf okay infimum of upf where p is partition p is partition of closed interval 0 1 okay so see you know that for different different partitions we will have different different upper sums and what will be its lowest value that is nothing but upper integral infimum value get it see if you increase the partition getting if you increase the partition what will happen upf will reduce getting and we want its infimum value that means number of partition should be very large very large means how much that means our n number of partitions n tends to infinity so i will simply i will apply the limit here so this is equal to limit n tends to infinity and value of up uh, upf already we have calculated that is 3 by 2 plus 1 by 2 n right 
सो सी इफ यू अप्लाई द लिमिट थ्री बाई टू इज कॉन्स्टेंट इट विल बी सेम थ्री बाई टू इफ यू अप्लाइड द लिमिट टू द सेकंड टर्म वॉट विल हैपन एन टेंस टू इन्फिनिटी दैट मीन्स वन अपॉन इन्फिनिटी वी विल हैव वैल्यू ऑफ वन अपॉन इन्फिनिटी इज जीरो सो दैट्स वाई थ्री बाई टू प्लस जीरो विच इज नथिंग बट थ्री बाई टू सो दिस इज वैल्यू ऑफ अपर इंटीग्रल हाफ पार्ट इज डन नो नाउ वी हैव टू कैलकुलेट लोअर इंटीग्रल सो फॉर दैट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी हैव टू कैलकुलेट स्मॉल एम आई ओके सो नाउ लेट मी राइट हियर स्मॉल एम आई स्मॉल एम आई इट्स डेफिनेशन इज इन्फिम ऑफ एफ ऑफ एक्स गेटिंग इन्फिम ऑफ एफ ऑफ एक्स सच दैट आई माइनस वन बाय एन लेस देन और इक्वल टू एक्स लेस देन और इक्वल टू आई बाय सी दिस पार्ट आई हैव ऑलरेडी एक्सप्लेन यू इन केस ऑफ कैपिटल एम आई ओके सेम रीजनिंग वी हैव फॉर दैट सी वी वॉन्ट द इन्फिम वैल्यू ऑफ अ फंक्शन इन इज इंटरवल सी यू नो दैट फंक्शन हैज आइदर दिस फंक्शन विल फॉलो आइदर दिस ग्राफ और डायरेक्टली इट विल हैव वैल्यू जीरो सो इट्स मिनिमम वैल्यू इज ऑब्वियसली जीरो सिंस फंक्शन टेक्स जीरो ऑल्सो फॉर इरेशनल नंबर्स so therefore it is equal to zero and this is true for all i running from 1 to n so value of small m i is zero we have got right so now we have to calculate uh, lower integral okay make a screenshot of it then we'll go further let us find lpf now okay so the formula of lpf is summation i running from 1 to n small m i delta x i Okay, the value of small m i is zero. We have got so let me put it here. So this is equal to zero into anything zero. So value of LPF is zero. So let us calculate lower integral now. Okay, so now lower integral. Let me write the definition. LF is equal to supremum of LPF where p is partition. Okay, p is partition of closed interval. Zero one. So you know that for different different partitions, we will have different values of lower sums. What will be their maximum value? That is supremum. That is nothing but value of lower integral. But see, LPF is equal to zero. We have got, and this is true for any partition. Getting so obviously, it will have value zero. So their supremum is also zero, right? So what is value of lower integral? Zero. And what was the value of upper integral? Three by two. Both of them are different. So therefore, we say the Function is not Riemann integrable. Okay, let me write that thing here. So I have mentioned here the upper integral is not equal to lower integral. Therefore, function is not Riemann integrable on closed interval zero one. Okay, bye bye.